here is the journal that I finished last night. On the outside, it's just got this beautiful green fabric that I sewed on. I love adding beads to the binding. So on this one, I didn't actually put anything on the inside cover, but in today's tutorial, we I am gonna show you an option for putting something on the inside if you want to. So I have this really cool clear paper. What's this called? And I love having these because you just see little peaks of what's going on behind them. And I just love that. So when I do watercolor journaling, I really like to put little holes in the paper in different shapes just to give like a little bit of interest when you're flipping through. So I actually got this idea by someone on Instagram. I'll put their name down below because I can't remember. Um, and then I also did like another layer of these leaves, which I really love. So this is one of my favorite pages. So I love that it ended up on the front of the book. So I did do an extra little fold out on this page and I sewed it on. You do not have to use a sewing machine to make these. You can seriously just use glue or tape. Anything you have works, but I like the look of adding sewing onto my journals. I just think it's such a beautiful effect. So I did add lots of little watercolor details on this kind of fabric-y feeling paper. And then I just did a little Bible verse on that one, but I just love how you can see it through. Like that's just the coolest part. And then I was really just practicing a lot of different little watercolor effects. I put one of my little fabric wrapping paper trees on here. I just love how it looks. And I like to mix in the different scrapbooking papers that have like really cool texture, just because then when you flip through, there's something to touch and it just takes you, it just takes the whole journey of enjoying this and making it and then looking back through it just feels more special. So I just did a little bit of journaling here and I put this beautiful little drawing that I got in the mail along with one of my little Katie Daisy stickers. And I have these little clips. I have lots of different little clips and things, but again, this is not something that you need to create the journal. These are just extra little details that make it fun. And you can get things like this at Hobby Lobby or Michael's or Amazon, anywhere. So here's another example of a little peek through hole. So I did a little hexy because of course everything hexy this year. Um, and I turned the hexy into a quilt. And so I made a little picture scene of these little feet poking out of the bed with like little pillows. And it's on this like vintage um, music page that I ripped up and I love it. And you can see that I did do another sew on of this ribbon. Here's another look at me trying my hand at making trees. I'm definitely not a watercolor expert. I just have a lot of fun with it. I also made this little picture because I'm always dreaming of warmer days. Never do I want anything to do with coldness. <laughs> and then I put my little special thing that my daughter made me for Christmas right there. And then on the back here, I just did this little watercolor pattern. And that one was a lot of fun to just kind of see the different layers of the color based on how I dipped it into the paint. And that's it. That is the end. And you can see how much satisfaction it brings to just like finish a book from start to finish. And I love how it looks when you just like look at it like that. It's amazing. Real quick, I'll show you some of the watercolor tools that I use. I made this little bag out of some of my dyed fabrics and I put one of my Katie Daisy patches on there. Of course, with a moon for Luna. This is the watercolor paints that I've currently been using. It's Currents by Prima Marketing. And I really wanted to do an all blue watercolor book. I don't know why, it just was something that I had got into my mind and it sounded like what I wanted to do. I don't really have a reason for it. So I bought this set and I love the colors of it and how sturdy it is and how nice. 
So it actually has greens and blues, but these are all the colors that are included. So I really love these and I can put the link to where I got that on Amazon. If you wanted to try doing blue watercolor yourself, I'm probably gonna look for some more sets that are like this in other colors because I may do certain colors per book. We'll see. There are a couple of other things that I picked up to create my journals with. I have these paint pens right here. It's just acrylic painter. And honestly, it was like the cheapest one on Amazon. So nothing fancy. I have my Micron pens. I really like to journal with these. I just love how they look and how they write. The set I got gave me three different sizes. I believe I got this at Target. The paint pens actually came with six pens, which was really nice. I always keep some washi tape handy um, in some prints that I maybe don't love that much. Um, and I use these to put on the edges of my watercolor art so that the edges are nice and crisp and I love to peel it off. That's like the best part. I have some just regular pens too. Pencils for drawing some little doodles before I watercolor. I got this set on Amazon and I really loved the variety of brushes. My favorite brush to paint with is one that has kind of like a rectangle tip or one that's angled like this. These are my favorite kinds of brushes to paint with all the time, um, no matter what kind of art I'm doing. I love the variety and I love that there's so many. So I will put the link to all of the things. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that. I don't get anything from it. It's just, I wanna share with you guys what I use. Let me know if you guys would like to see some hand-sewn zipper pouches in the shop using some of my fabric because I would love to make some. Let's go ahead and jump in. So to make these simple books, I just use these mailers that I get that are firm cardboard. You could also use a cereal box and just kind of fold the front half of a box in half. Um, but these ones are just so sturdy. The ones that come with like artwork, different things like that, they're just, they're so thick and sturdy. They make the perfect base for a journal. Some people like everything to be the same and uniform, but I love variety <laughs> and I love everything to look a little bit wonky and off center. And I just think these different sizes are gonna be perfect for me. I think today we're just gonna go with this little one just because I only have a certain amount <laughs> of room to show you guys how to do everything. So the inside is fine how it is, but if you wanna add some paper to it, I think that that just kind of takes it up a notch. So let's start there. So I have a piece of paper, some Mod Podge, and a brush that's been used quite a few times for glue, so it's not good for painting anymore. I cut down my piece just a little bit. It's kind of a nice little square, and that will give me plenty of room to use a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbooking paper. So I'm just going to be gluing this down on to this piece just like this. I really like to push it down on this side just to kind of get it all smoothed out. Then you're just going to cut around it. Then on the corners here to fold it over, we are just going to cut it like this. I don't like to go all the way to the tip, just give like the tiniest little bit on the edge there. So your whole piece looks like this. Then we are going to make these corners nice and crisp and just put some more glue here. So this is the cover. So we are actually covering this inside piece on to the cover here. So we are just going straight onto the cover. Using the end of the scissors to smooth this out is also another really good option. Some of the glue will kind of seep out, but I just use my fingers and I just push it. Then to make this corner, go in and put more glue 
and you do the same thing and this edge right here is just going to make a nice pretty edge look how nice we have our finished inside and it goes all the way around the edges so it's nice and crisp and clean and I absolutely love it. So you could actually do this for the outside too if you wanted to and then put a layer on the inside. That is completely up to you. Then you could just like put another piece of paper right on top and then, you know, that would be a completed look as well if you didn't want to use fabric. But because I want to use fabric, this is what we've got. So now on the outside, I'm going to be using this fabric right here that I dyed in my fabric video and I'm going to be sewing this to the outside. So I'm just going to cut it a little bit bigger than what I need, just right around the edges. This is the sewing machine that I use, a sinker heavy duty. So I am going to just sew my fabric right on. So I'm actually gonna do it on the inside just so that I make sure I get all around the edges nicely since I won't be able to see it from the front. I'm going to be using some little clips to clip mine on, but if you don't have that, you can use any kind of clip you have, a paper clip, anything. I am going to make sure that there's a little bit of wiggle room and I didn't make it too, too tight because if I do, it will really stretch when it's time to fold. You can, to prevent that, you can even fold it and then clip if you need to. I like to line everything that I sew up with the foot right here. When I get to this next side, I just lift my sewing foot, turn it, and remove the clip. Then just put your sewing foot back down and keep sewing. I like to do a little back stitch using the reverse at the beginning and the end just to ensure that the thread stays put. My fabric is nice and sewed on. I just used this yellow thread that I already had in my machine because I'm not very particular about things like that. So now you can see that it's a nice pretty cover. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off all this excess. So if you don't have a sewing machine, you, you can just mod podge the fabric right onto the back and smooth it out, or you can just use paper. So we're just going to trim these edges. So now our fabric journal cover is all finished. I think I'm going to do it like this because I love this big butterfly right here. And so this is going to be the front and this is the back. So this is a great opportunity for if you do have something that's embroidered to just put it right here on the front. And that just makes it all the more personalized and beautiful. So that was pretty simple to make the cover. And now we just need to put the papers on the inside. Let's talk about the journals that are going to be in the shop <laughs> for just a minute because I'm so excited. Like, honestly, I just don't even think you guys know how excited I am. <laughs> so this is the first little mock-up I did and it has this embroidered seashell on there that I made. And this pattern is gonna come for you guys um, when it's closer to summer, if you want to embroider the same seashell pattern, because I really wanted to share that with you guys. But for now, um, I'm making some journals and they're all going to be on my hand dyed fabric. I think that dyeing fibers is just the thing that I'm meant to do because I know I used to do yarn and then it just became something where I enjoyed dyeing the yarn, but I didn't really love knitting. Not like I should. I like to play with fabric more than I like to play with yarn. So I just feel more excited and more motivated and just so anyway, <laughs> um, okay, so here is another one that I did. I'm obsessed with this seashell right here. This is like my favorite color of thread. Um, I don't remember what the exact color is, but I can find out if you want to know. Just comment below and let me know. And it's on this like beautiful shade of green. So I don't know for sure if I can give this one away. <laughs> 
but I probably will. Um, I will probably list this one in the shop and I'll make another one for myself because yeah. Also making a seashell on this fabric right here, which is beautiful. I'm also going to be doing some daydreams. So this is just going to say daydreams and I'll probably do like a maybe like a creamy white color in this one or I might do this shell color. So anyway, there's going to be a ton and then I'm doing, I have these three ready to make some moons and this is what the moon journals are going to look like. Oh my god, I'm I'm obsessed with these. Like I honestly I'm having to really calm myself down these days because I want to be in this room crafting at all hours of the day. And I have to homeschool my kids. I have to make dinner. I have to clean my house. Life is like a million miles a minute. Our life is insane. Being there for my family, that is my priority. And just being the mom that I need to be. But all I wanna do is come in here and make stuff. Like that's all I wanna do. <laughs> and so I'm having to really, I'm really having to take it down a notch. And I, I don't, I wanna move at full speed ahead. So anyway, these are coming. And I don't wanna say when, because when I put a date on something, I feel that I just don't do it. So from now on, um, no dates are given. I'm just going to have these in the shop in the near future. And I hope y'all are excited. Um, they will have watercolor paper in them as well as other journaling papers, just like we're doing with this project. I like to get nine by 12 watercolor paper because you can make the most sizes with that um, or bigger. So these are just folded in half and cut up into pieces. So these three are going to go into the journal. This is the watercolor book I picked up on Amazon. I got some of these little vellum. Is it the, I can't remember what this stuff is called. <laughs> um, but anyway, I got these for some of the shell journals. Those are gonna go in the shell journals. Is that not stunning? Like that seagrass that's by the sea. So these are going to be saved for that. So be on the lookout. And then I got these beautiful flower ones. So I'm gonna use one of these in my journal today because I really like this to be on the front and the back. And I have this really pretty cream color that I'm gonna use. I was clearly cutting hexes <laughs> on this, but I think I'm gonna use this really pretty flower paper. It's got a little bit of shimmer. Also, so this is going to be a very neutral journal and I'm kind of pulling that inspiration from this butterfly paper. I just think the inside being all nice and crisp is going to be a beautiful palette for my blue watercolors. I pulled out a fresh sheet just to kind of show you how I will do this. So this is just a 12 by 12 piece of scrapbooking paper. This is actually cardstock, but I wanted to use that and then put it in my journal. So this is a little bit too big, but that is okay. So I'm just going to cut that. I do not measure anything when I craft. I measure a little when I sew, but I am not big on measuring. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, you could do two things. You could either cut this down or you could turn this into little pockets or little fold outs. So I'm going to just kind of Fold these in like this and I'm not going to decide right now if I want it to be a pocket or a fold out. I'm going to wait until I'm actually working in my journal because there's multiple options. You can put some double-sided tape right here and tape it down and then you can slip something in and out. You can sew it or you can add other pieces of paper here make another little journal that you can flip through right here the opportunities are endless then i made this side even thicker because i just i like uneven journals <laughs> so i'm just going to repeat that with all of my papers until i have it just how i want it
Once you have everything in there just how you like it, now is the opportunity to put some little punch holes in it if you would like to, or little tabs, anything you would want to add. You can sew on fabric, you can sew on ribbons, you can really take the time to personalize it how you would want to, or you can do this while you're creating it. Another example, I did not add this page in until later on. But now is a good time to go ahead and punch these kinds of things out um, if you choose to. So I think I'm just going to put one hexi in. I will put the link to the hexi punch that I use. These are great for doing the daily hexi if you didn't get the hexi starter kit or if you plan on making a lot more hexis then this is a great investment because it's really, really great for if that is a style of sewing that you enjoy. Okay, so I think I'm going to put it right here, right in the middle, because I really love this cardstock fabric and I think it would be really pretty to see it through. So I'm just gonna do a little hexy right here in the center. I'm gonna be able to see a little see-through and I'll definitely be putting something else back here as well. So that is optional. You don't have to add any kind of details like that if you don't choose to, it's just kind of an extra. So now we are just going to bind this. So you have two options. You can sew right down this line if you're using a sewing machine or I have all the supplies that I need to bind a book. This kit was not very expensive. It included this waxed thread, this punch tool, and the needle. When you're sure you like everything just as you have it, you're gonna want to clip these papers down because they will want to move around when it's time to punch everything. So I have these clips right here that I like to just secure my paper. And I do like to move my book a little bit because it's gonna move, the paper is gonna move when you bend it. So if you only keep it open, it's, it's not gonna work. You're gonna need to go ahead and fold the side to give it room to move. You can see here, paper literally moves. So I really like to bind it. I like to clip it when it's kind of bent to make sure it's in the position it's gonna be in. So, oh, that's kind of cute too. Keep those in there like that. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I do a very, very simple binding method. So I'm going to punch three holes, one right in the center, one up here, and one down here. Again, I do not measure, but if that is about to drive you crazy that I don't measure, I do not take it personally. So you just poke this right through. Now, if you don't have one of these tools, that is okay. You can use something else to poke through. You can use, um, you can just use like a needle, whatever needle you're planning to sew with. Um, you just really need to make a hole. So, there is our first one. Now we're gonna do one over here and one over here. I just eyeball it. <laughs> I just like to um, think about how much I think it needs and then just punch. So we have our three holes. And then I think I'm going to just use this natural color. It goes along with the inside. You're gonna use your darning needle, which if you're a knitter, you probably already have one of these. Be surprised how much you can just use with whatever you have laying around your house. Okay, so we are going to go into the first circle. I mean, the first hole. And then I'm going to hold this string with my thumb. Then I'm going to go into the next hole up here at the top. And then you're just going to go down through the bottom one. 
and you're going to keep this first string on the left side and then you're just going to go into that middle hole and you're going to pull it up on the other side of that thread and then you're just going to tie a knot and tie another one so at this point you have probably pretty long strings hanging down I like to add beads to mine because I just think it just gives it a little bit of character. So I always, always, always put beads in my journal strings. That is up to you though. So you can add those on at this point or you can just leave it and cut them down short and they'll just be right there. And you're finished. You did it. You made a journal. So that's it. That's all you have to do. If you would like to add like a ribbon right here to tie it, you can, but I don't like to do that until I'm completely finished because I like to be able to just open it and flip through it and just do whatever I feel like doing with these blank pages. I think this is the perfect size because it's not too overwhelming. It's just the right amount of papers to keep your mind excited and get you just going. The edges will fray a little bit, but I love that. Over time, it starts to kind of look like this, which is my preferred way for it to look. And I say just let it be crazy while you're working on it. And then over time, all these little pieces will kind of just come off and it'll be this really beautiful frayed edge. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. It was just really fun to chat with you guys about all of the things that I am just so excited about. Be sure to show me your journals on Instagram. Send me a picture. I want to see. <laughs> Bye.